So I seem to have gained uh, a few new fans this week. <laughs> uh, by fans, I'm saying that sarcastically. It's uh, people who are coming at me with the the usual lines I've heard a million times before. You know, you would you never were a you're not a real alcoholic. You never were an alcoholic to begin with, so you didn't belong in AA. <laughs> Which you know, I I talked about that last week, and you know, some of the comments I got from subscribers on here actually made a very valid point. Well, thank God I don't need those cult meetings. Thank God there really was something else wrong with me all along. Um, but I did get a few uh, of the usual comments about, you know, you're the miserable, angry person, which I always thought that's funny. Uh, because even if let's just say that's true, let's say I'm just a miserable, angry person who wakes up every morning super pissed at the way the world is treating me right now, that still doesn't uh, disprove what I'm saying, that AA is a cult religion. Uh, you know, uh, I was looking at a thing on a, on a history YouTube channel not too long ago during one of the London plagues in the 19th century uh, there were a, a few people that came up with it well that I'd have to go into a lot more specifics with it but to sum it all up there was one of the uh, a men of the day who came up with this idea with microscopes to look at the water and he said you know you got all these swimming little things in the water I mean uh, this might have something to do with why people are getting sick around London and everybody of course, said he was an idiot. Everybody said he was delusional and he was crazy and he didn't know what he was talking about. And of course, he was right. Whether he was a saintly guy or whether he was a miserable guy or whether he was just uh, totally delusional in many other areas does not change the fact that he was right about what he saw under the microscopes. There are things that live in the in the drinking water. Uh, without getting derailed here, I actually... Uh, had to make a joke not too long ago because they were talking about contaminated, you know, tap water, contaminated drinking water, and even the kind of water you buy over the counter, I mean, not over the counter like a medicine, but the type you buy in a store, you know, you got like a million different brands of water. Uh, I could talk about comedian Louis Black and his little joke about the, the milk line that goes on forever and ever in grocery stores, uh, but not to get the rail, but they were talking about how polluted it is. And I said, it's kind of ironic uh, that I quit drinking alcohol and trying to give up smoking, I'm vaping for the most part, uh, only to be killed by drinking water. But uh, without getting derailed on that, there was something else that, that kind of came to mind about this. I had a few people saying I never worked with others. I never helped nobody. That's probably why I got drunk again or why. Now, it's funny. That's why I got drunk again, but I'm not an alcoholic. I'm, an alcohol I'm not an alcoholic, but I got drunk again because I didn't follow the instructions in the big book, which are only for alcoholics to follow. Okay, uh, <laughs> I think you can see where the confusion is coming from here with all the contradictory statements, but somebody else said, uh, the, you know, the people that you see in meetings that, that act a certain way, those are the people that just did steps one through nine, <laughs> and they, they got a sufficient psychic change enough to stop drinking, but they didn't get a full spiritual experience, which reminds me that the AA Big Book does talk about, you know, you got a new employer, God, even though they're not a religion, remember, they're not a religion, but you got a new employer, God, who's going to... Uh, tell you what to do and all kinds of remarkable things are going to happen as long as you seek his will and remain close to him. Now, any organization that tells you that you have to obey the will of God, any organization that tells you that you have to stay close to him is a religion. I mean, you can argue the spiritual bullshit all you want to. You can say, yeah, but you can be an AA member and a Methodist. You can be an AA member and a Catholic. But I guarantee you, if you went to an AA meeting and you said, you know what? I went to confession, and uh, the priest absolved me of all my sins, and I went up there, uh, I don't know, for, for the people who are former Catholic or Catholic, you know what I'm talking about, you get a penance from the priest where you say, you know, 10 Hail Marys and 10 Our Fathers and 10 Glory Bees and, you know, a couple of things like that, and you're kind of absolved uh, from what you've done wrong. Uh, but if you went in and said, well, I went to confession this week with the priest, and I, you know, I did a, a full-blown confession of everything, and he absolved me of my sins, so you know what? I understand the principles behind the steps, but I don't think this program applies to me. Watch how you would be treated in an AA meeting if you were to say that. Now, of course, old timers, they like to invent stories off the top of the off the top of their head. You know, I, no sooner did I say this than some asshole is going to come and say, "Well, we had a guy in my meeting just like that. He got for, forgiven by God in the Catholic Church, and we didn't kick him out. We never said anything bad about him. He sponsors people, like yada 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 bullshit stories." You may have you ever noticed any scenario you describe 
uh, any scenario you bring up about the way AA operates as a cult, then they'll invent a story like that at the drop of a hat. You know, well, in my meeting, we had a 13th stepper. We all got together and ran him out. You know, well, in my meeting, we had a guy that was uh, that was a drug addict, and we didn't condemn him for that. In my meeting, we had a guy that said he never worked the steps, and we didn't condemn him for that. You know, the funny thing about it was I used to see some of the very people engaging in that behavior that would, that would make up those kinds of stories. I remember an old-timer who threw a temper tantrum when somebody in a meeting introduced themselves as a heroin addict and didn't say they had a desire to stop drinking, threw a complete temper tantrum about it, you know, got up and left the meeting, stormed out, you know, he wasn't going to sit in the meeting with a fucking drug addict, his exact words. Two weeks later, I saw him sitting in the meeting and said, yeah, we don't judge anybody here, you know, uh, we see people in here all the time that don't know if they're alcoholic or not, and I just tell them the same thing. I say, well, you may not be an alcoholic, but if you stick around AA, you'll be able to decide if you've been alcoholic. And I didn't see that behavior with the heroin addict. He didn't say to the heroin addict, well, you know, stick around for a few meetings and maybe your problem's not heroin, maybe your problem's really alcoholism, you know. The very people that make up these stories are the very ones that engage in the most, you know, a uh, hypocritical bunch of bullshit. It was like one sponsor I had that used to say to people all the time, two things I don't do. One is lie and one is steal. And he did both on a consistent basis. But, <coughs> <coughs> sinuses again, weird climate out here. <laughs> but anyway, it got me to thinking, overall, I was leading up to a point with that. The accusations don't really bother me. You know, they're nothing I haven't heard before. But they talk about this being a simple program. And the chair is squeaking, so I'm going to adjust so it doesn't keep squeaking through the whole video like it sometimes does. They say it's a simple program, and of course, right there in Bill's story, I think it is. Yeah, it's simple but not easy. A price had to be paid. Complete destruction of the self. The Father of Light doeth within. But it's not a religion. <laughs> anyway, they say it's a simple program, and then they'll, sometimes I've heard them say in meetings it's a simple program for complicated people, which I think is very condescending. Uh, and, and sanctimonious in of itself because they also accuse people of being too smart for the program, which leads me to the point that I was leading up to for the video altogether. Have you ever noticed that if it's such a simple program that anybody can grasp it, anybody can get sober with it, if you're an alcoholic, you could definitely get sober with it, they have a million different excuses for why it don't work when it doesn't work for somebody. Now, if you come into AA and you stop drinking and you, you know, put on a brave front in the meetings and you lie and you talk about how wonderful you are and how you don't get angry anymore and how you had a sponsor that had all the right answers for you at all the right times that they took you through the steps and you had an awakening. And I used to hear him actually proclaim in meetings, and I know what God's will is for me today, really. Did he call you on a phone? Did, did, you know, did you, did you actually hang out with God in one of those coffee shops in the meetings after the meetings? Because if none of those things happened... You're making a, a, a bold proclamation that you can't possibly prove. Just because you haven't drank in a very long time does not mean that God came to you and told you, this is my will for you today, to sit in meetings for the rest of your life and make other people miserable with your high-handed, arrogant sanctimoniousness. But they have a million, you know, if you come in and you sober up and you, you know, put on the phony face and say all the right things and have a million sponsors, sponsees that you can wear like badges of honor and pull the appropriate long face when I'm relapses and say, yeah, I take it personally when a sponsee relapses because, you know, this, not all of us get sober in here. Some have to die so that others can live. You know, I've heard all this shit before, but if you do that, AA is going to grab all the credit for it. Well, look at that. You know, AA works for alcoholics. He, he was a hopeless alcoholic when he got here. God worked a miracle for him. God removed his obsession to drink. God made him who he is today. Really funny how God has nothing better to do in his time but go around uh, removing obsessions to drink for old timers and giving them a magic wish list of all their desires to come true at the drop of a hat because they did a fourth and fifth step. I mean, it actually says in their literature, we have a new employer. All these wonderful things happen as long as you do his will, of course. You know, it's on condition. God has conditional love for alcoholics, you know. Well, you, you left out a, a thing on your fourth step there about how you, you know, you didn't talk about the time you stole a cookie in, in the first grade and and somebody saw you and the teacher didn't believe them and, and you get, didn't get punished. You didn't tell your sponsor about that. So you know what? As AA God, I'm going to punish you with complete drunkenness and a drunken bender and maybe even a suicide or two because you didn't draw close to me and seek my will, <laughs> you know. But when you fail, when something doesn't work out, when you drink again, when you relapse, they have 10 million reasons why you couldn't get the program. You were not willing. You were in denial. You're probably not a real alcoholic. You uh, had secrets. You're only as sick as your secrets in here. You didn't work with others. 
You weren't capable of being honest. You didn't do the fourth step properly. You didn't do the fifth step properly. Did you really truly do all your amends? I mean, because, you know, you might have thought you did all your amends, but you didn't do it. You know, even if the fucking big book has it at one point, the people thought they, they did inventory. They thought they had humbled themselves. Don't know how Bill W. knows what everybody thinks, but, you know, if you drink again, you didn't really do the fourth step the way you're supposed to do the fourth step. They've got an excuse for that. Uh, all the reasons why you drink, you know, because you're selfish, because of fear, because of, uh, because of the seven fucking deadly sins, because of this, because of that. They've got a million complicated reasons as to why you can't do the program, but then they'll tell you it's a simple program for everybody and anybody can get sober. It, it, that nobody, nobody can have a problem getting sober, you know, unless they're, of course, not a real alcoholic, which is really funny because in your first meeting, they will tell you that nobody gets to AA by mistake, but then if you say, well, you know what? I don't, I don't identify with this shit, so I'm not coming back anymore. Uh, never was a real alcoholic to begin with. Or you were dry drunk. You were dry drunk, you're going to come crawling back in there again. For a program that's supposed to be really, really simple, they have 10 million trillion excuses as to why it doesn't work for people. Now, I've told this story in here before, uh, but for the benefit of maybe uh, newer people subscribing or just tuning in, there was a period in my life where I was practically unemployable. I was literally that close to being on the streets. I was living in somebody's garage. Uh, I had gotten out of drug court jail on my, you know, I, I don't like talking about my, you know, my criminal history with alcohol. I'm not proud of it or anything like that, but I was in a really bad place. I was in a really low place in my life. I was having to walk to meetings. I didn't have a driver's license, didn't have a vehicle, and pretty much lost everything. Uh, and at the time, there was a particular group that was about a mile away that I walked to every day. And yeah, believe it or not, I actually did that. And uh, I've talked about it on here before. It was pouring rain on several occasions. And then people who were there to just help another alcoholic drove right by me like they didn't even see me. But that's beside the point. I walked there every night. I walked there in the afternoon sometime because it was one of those AA clubhouse kind of places where they had two, three meetings a day. Uh, I would always get there about 35, 45 minutes before the meeting started. I would have the coffee brewing. Uh, I did mopping the floors and putting the chairs up and getting the newcomers literature and all the other shit that comes with, you know, being a devoted good little cult member, had a sponsor, did all the steps, uh, again, for the hundred thousandth time, uh, did all, you know, big book studies, tradition studies, everything went on at that clubhouse, I was there for all of them, and I was the guy who made the coffee for all of them at eight o'clock at night, but I was there at seven o'clock getting everything ready. And I'm leading to a point here where I'm not bragging on my own accomplishments for being an obedient slave to the cult religion. But here's the thing. A couple of months went by, and I had to pass a liquor store every night on the way there. You know, I walked by it numerous occasions, and nothing happened. But there was one particular night. I don't remember what was really going on with me. I don't think nothing was going on with me. I was walking back to my place, to this shithole garage, and... Uh, I, had, I decided, you know something, I want to fucking drink. In fact, I was thinking about a drink before I even got to the meeting that night. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get me a half pint uh, of vodka. And I'm going to have me, you know, <laughs> which started out as a half pint. Uh, and then for a little while there, uh, it was a half pint, maybe once a week, something like that. And of course, finally, it, it, it ballooned all out of control. And I was having a pint a day, which turned into a fifth a day, which turned into a drunken bender, which was a really bad drunken bender because I was, you know, already in a borderline homeless state and living at the whims of this old timer asshole that I've talked about on here before. I could tell you, I could write a book about what a piece of shit that guy really was. But here's the thing. After the two month bender, I come back to that meeting again. And of course, nobody wants to talk to me. They're more than happy for me to be the obedient cult member again, but nobody will say a word to me if you know, they won't speak to me unless they have one question for me. And the one question they had for me was, uh, what happened? What, what happened, you know? Uh, and somebody even in the topic one time said, uh, nobody, nobody just finds themselves in a liquor store. Nobody. Nobody ever finds themselves in a liquor store. There's something they did to put themselves in a liquor store. Well, I didn't really have an answer for this. They just grilled me all the time about it, you know, and, and I finally got sick of it. I got so sick of it that I gave them the answer that I knew would finally shut them the fuck up. I said, well, you know, I mean, I, uh, I stopped going to meetings. And they started nodding. Well, that'll do it, you know. And I said, and uh, I started isolating. And they said, yep, 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 yep. Heard it a million times. And I said, and uh, I didn't really pray that day. <laughs> and I said, and uh, 
I, I I didn't really work with others. You know, I didn't I didn't really do anything with others, even though <laughs> even though I talked to new people that was coming in and out all the time, hanging out outside with the borderline homeless people and everything. And then I said, uh, I left something out on my fourth step, and uh, you know. Uh, I, I didn't have a sponsor, even though everybody knew who my fucking sponsor was. Everybody knew because he was he was proud to say, you know, my guy over there with 30 days, you know, and all that. Of course, he practically fucking disowned me uh, when I had the relapse. And I said, I didn't have a sponsor, you know. I thought I could do it myself. Uh, I, I, I got really prideful. I, I took my will back, you know. I, I thought I surrendered my will, but I took my will back. And they, of course, proceeded with that idiotic, you know, like that. And they bought it. They bought it hook, line, and sinker. You know, even though I was there at those meetings every night, they bought it that I had stopped going to meetings. Even though I had a sponsor and they all knew who the sponsor was, they bought it. You know, I didn't have a sponsor. Uh, they knew uh, that, I, that I constantly was talking to new people and constantly around the newcomers because my sponsor was making me do that, and they bought it. I, you know, I stopped working with new people. I, I didn't work with nobody. <laughs> no. In other words, they just wanted the pat answers. They just wanted uh, the explanations that could satisfy them as to why their cult religion is perfect and why people who fail the cult religion are, are, you know, are, are, are to blame for it. If everything goes well for you in AA, AA takes all the credit. If you fail and fuck up and drink again, even if it's no reason why you drank anyway, it could just be a moment where sometimes you just feel like drinking. Uh, then that's all your fault. Everything is your fault. The program is perfect. You are the one who fails. You know, uh, uh, the program is perfect for everybody, but if you fail, it was all your fault. Funny how the program takes credit for the good things, but it doesn't take credit uh, for the failures that it has. Even though on the average papers, I remember a quote uh, from AA Comes of Age, and I was actually told to read that book by a sponsor, although I had another sponsor that said, that's not the first 164 pages. Yeah, trust me, I know all about their fucking answers. But even in AA of Comes of Age, Bill W. said, you have no idea how much failure we had in the early days. We had to literally step over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people just to get a few to take the bait, which I find a, an interesting choice of words, to take the bait. In other words, you didn't really have a cure for alcoholism. You just had a phony cult religion. You was trying to sell everybody, and they, you needed somebody to take the bait. He even bragged about it at Dr. Bob's funeral. He said, you know, we, we had so many failures. You just can't imagine how many failures we had. Which leads me to the subscriber comment that I, that I want to close out this with, and then I'm going to round it out to the point I was trying to make all along. Uh, this particular subscriber left me this comment, and I think it's worth reading. I think it's a good one. I get so many good comments, I wish I could read them all, but uh, the longer you went on, the more it made me think they're talking about me in a video. The only two times I stopped drinking and was happy about it is when I was in a happy relationship with a woman and felt like I had a family and people that cared about me. Happened recently again, thankfully, and all of a sudden the thought of coming home and numbing myself with alcohol just doesn't seem appealing. Wow, what a revelation. The first time this happened, I was going to AA, but AA had me convinced it was the stupid steps and the shit that was keeping me sober. No, it was the fact that I didn't feel miserable and alone in the world. Thankfully, that's how I feel now, and I simply lost my desire to want to put up with feeling like shit every day and the consequences that come with the overuse of alcohol. Funny thing is, AA members would be appalled to hear this. They say no relationships for a year. They'll tell you no relationships for a year while the old timers pretty much hit on every, every young person that's, that's fresh out of treatment that hasn't got a place to stay. They can't wait to, the, the, you know, snatch them up like the predatory bastards that they really are. But they'll tell you, you don't get in a relationship, you know. Uh, who wants to feel miserable and alone every day? The person, the comment says, it's bullshit. How is cutting yourself off from the entire world except AA members healthy for anyone? Of course it doesn't take long to think, shit, I was happy at drinking no matter the consequences. Stupid thinking, but it's common. I've been there many times. When I feel I have good relationships in my life, I feel better about myself and I don't want to self-destruct. It has nothing to do with some hundred-year-old book written by a con man. Jesus, I fell for that shit. Unbelievable. You know, it's funny. They go on and on and on about all the reasons that you become an alcoholic. The seven deadly sins, fear, selfishness, no moral inventory, moral psychology, in full flight from reality, turning your back on God, not obeying God's will, and all these other bullshit things. And what this person said in their comment makes more sense than a whole all that claptrap put together. Sometimes you drink for those very reasons. You drink because, like, the stages of my life before I ever got to AA, when I got to AA for the first time, 
there was a lot in my life that was all fucked up and not and and, and the only coping mechanism I had was booze. Booze was always a, a good coping mechanism for me. There was a time I could come home from work after a hot day and drink a, a little bit, you know, watching the news or whatever, and it was not a big deal. I might get intoxicated on the weekend with friends, uh, but it was not this major deal. It became a coping mechanism for me when a lot of external things was going on in my life that had nothing to do uh, with, with, with me being in full flight from reality and turning my back on God or some shit like that. They say it's a simple program, but they turn it into this complicated pseudo-religious horse shit. There, and then they blame you for not falling for it, hook, line, and sinker. And then they blame you for it uh, if you if you drink again. Anyway, I had no idea. <clears throat> I had no idea what I was going to talk about when I started this video out. I was I was even saying to myself, you know, I might not get one up this week because I have no clue what I'm going to say. Uh, but in 20 minutes and 35 seconds, I pretty much said what I what I think I f feel I need to say this week. Anyway, keep the comments coming. I, I do enjoy reading those because the feedback I get from people out here it lets me know, you know, that, that there are other people out here who see the things I saw. Because believe it or not, AA has a good way of isolating you and making you feel like you're the one going crazy when maybe they, when there's nothing wrong with you whatsoever. Until next week.